Hey, Joe. Got a letter from the kid. Donnie? Yeah, he's in Paris. What's he say, Hot? The writing looks more like chicken tracks. He says the state shifted him to a farm in Paris. Oh, farm. That's good. Maybe he'll get a job for me. <laughs> he says, I wanted you to know why I couldn't be there on Saturday. It's kind of lonesome here on the farm. I don't get to go out much. Tell Joe hello. Tell Joe hello, huh? That's good. Hey, the kitty's OK, huh? I don't know. You know, it's, it's funny Mary McKay would leave like that. Box 317 Ferrison. Doesn't say who he's with. He's a kid, he don't think. Box 317 Ferriston. Any farm in Ferriston would be out on an RFD. Ferriston. Hope it's a good farm. Hey, what they grow on farm in Ferriston? Box 317. No RFD. I don't get to go out much. Hey, Joe. Stay to the westward of Little Spoon Island. Let's head for Bellport. Bellport? What we do there? I want to find out something. Donnie this morning. Oh? How was he? He didn't seem very happy. Where is he? Didn't he tell you? He said he was on a farm outside Ferriston. But he gave a box number in town. Oh. Well, is that right? Yes. A farm not far from Ferriston. What's the name of these people Donnie's staying with? I'd like to see him. Well, you ought to know. You're responsible for him. You put him there. Where is he? I can't tell you that. You can't or you won't? I promised that I wouldn't. Promised who? I thought when you decided to let Donnie come and work on my boat that you'd beaten this fear of yours. But I guess you haven't. All right, you said you'd take him away, so now you have. Hard, I didn't. Please, you've got to believe me. That had nothing to do with it. Where is he? I just can't tell you. All right, I'll have to find out my own way. Hard, wait a minute. I know you don't believe me, but I've told you everything I can. Now I'm warning you. If you keep on, you're only going to hurt the boy. Smoke. He ain't in. What is it? What you think? Porters? I'll porters. Ah. Hello, Josh. Joe. Hello, Josh. Well, come in. Sit down in a chair. 
Now, ain't that nourishing? I ain't seen you fellas in a dog's age. Wonder you wouldn't come and see a man sometime. Well, if you don't cork yourself in that chair once in a while, what you hide there, huh? Oh, you know, <laughs> sitting at a desk all the time. Sure, big millionaire, counting your money. Millionaire? Listen, with taxes what they are and working hours in the day getting fewer all the time. All right, all right, you fellas need some. No, Josh, this is something else. You're quite a political figure around here. Figure? Right? National committeeman? State delegate, honorary fire chief, candidate for select man. Ain't it amazing the titles and badges a fellow assumes for the good of the community? We don't tell nobody, Josh. Why, you, you Cape Verde sardine fisherman. I thought you was going to go to farming. Put it quick now, you see. I want to ask you something, Josh. Shoot. Do you suppose you could use your connections to find out who holds box 317 in Ferriston? Ferriston, sure. 317. Didn't fall for one of them matrimonial ads, did you? Uh, Jenny, get me a post office in Ferriston. Bill, uh, Bill Murray. Ah, yeah. No thanks. Good ones. No obligation to vote. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Bill? Uh, Josh Hovey. Great. Yeah? Yeah? You better well. Uh, say, Bill, do you know offhand who ran Sparks 317? One seven. What? <laughs> no, no, just for a friend. Yeah. Well, well, thanks, Bill. Sure do, yeah. Box 317. That's the state reform school. The what? Josh, do you remember Johnny Mitchell? Johnny? Sure. We shipped with him, didn't we, Joe? On the old Maya Mitchell schooner, the uh, Emily T, wasn't it? Sure, I forget the Emily T. That's the one. Johnny's boy is in this reform school at Ferriston. I want you to help me get him out. That's a tall order from reform school. What could you do with him, even if you got him out? Adopt him? Adopt him? Yeah. You want to help me? Hard. You can have the boat yard if you want it. As a matter of fact, I'll take it on one condition. If that chair goes with it. I already made the arrangements to be buried in it. <laughs> I'll do what I can. Couldn't ask you any more, Josh. Thanks very much. Oh, well, it's nice to see you. Nice Come to see you again. Island. You bet I yes, will. Sir. Yes. Goodbye, Josh. Bye-bye, Joe. Hey, it's a good politics cigar, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to drop in again now, boys. Uh, Jenny, get me Hank Wilson in Ferriston. Oh, no, better yet, get me Claude Lutz in Bellport, the uh, county courthouse, I think. Yes. Okay, Charlie. You got a pen? You got a my house. Now, do what the book say. Josh Hovey. It's a nice boat. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hart, it took time, like I told you, and I may have to vote for Judge Tate next year. But I got you hearing. For when? Tuesday. That's the 10th, ain't it? Courthouse in Bellport. It's not going to be easy, Hart. That kid was arrested for stealing. He stole a camera and sold it. Oh. He's a ward of the state, and not too good a record. If you take my advice, Hard, you'll get all the people you can on your side. You'll need plenty of help. I got in all the licks I could. Tate's a tough old customer, but he's honest. Mm. Well, thanks, Josh. I guess the best we can do is try. Like your place. All this did envy the fellow who had an island. Want to 
sell. Not a chance. You better stick to this. This is for sale. You don't think I would own it, do you? Well, I guess I better be moving on back. Shove off, boys. Hey, Josh, how much that cost? The boat? No, who wants that? The whistle. <laughs> Go on, Josh. Thanks again. <laughs> Goodbye, Josh. Goodbye. Joe is. He was supposed to meet us here. If he had to wait, he probably went inside where he could sit down. Hard, what about this Ann Freeman? Is she in line? I don't know. I, I don't see how she could stand in the way of an adoption, but I just don't know, Josh. How are you? Fine. I want you to meet a friend of mine, a fine fellow. Mr. Stillwell, this is Judge Tate. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Sit down. Miss Freeman, I'm Judge Tate. Just sit down, please. As this is more or less of a family affair, I don't think we need to be so formal. Miss Freeman, will you sit here? Mr. Stillwell, why don't you move in a little closer? I'm sure she won't mind. I usually handle these matters in my chambers, but I have the boy in there, and I don't want to arouse any false hopes of him. This is Mr. Stilwell's petition to adopt Donald Mitchell, a ward of the state of Maine, sentenced to the state reform school on June 3rd of this year. Now, Mr. Stilwell, since you're a single man and it's rather unusual for a bachelor to adopt a child, I wonder if you'd start by giving me some of your reasons. Well, I, I know this boy very well. I knew his father and, and his uncle. And I'm sure that I can give him more advantages than the state reform school. We won't go into a discussion of our state institutions, sir, which have a remarkably fine record, and whose problems I feel certain you are in no position to discuss. I beg your pardon. Are you financially able and prepared to care for the boy? I, I think so. I'm a lobsterman. I own my own home, my own boat. And, of course, I haven't got any big bank balance, but I make a pretty good living. Am I too late? Madam, this is a private hearing. If you are not an interested party, I... I'd like to know who's more interested than I am. Johnny Mitchell lived in my house. Mary McKay. Oh, I didn't recognize you. Hello, Walter. Come around in, Mary. I didn't mean to disturb your court, Your Honor. Oh, we're just discussing a matter. Mr. Stowell here has requested the state to permit him to adopt young Mitchell. Well, why shouldn't he? It's the best thing could happen to him. It's about time somebody took an interest in that boy. He's been moved around from pillar to post. Now, wait a minute, Mary. Wait a minute, nothing. That boy's going to get a square deal if I have to set fire to the courthouse, and you're not going to stop me. Mary, if now, you'll Walter, just sit in with us and listen. I've known you since you were knee-high to a grasshopper, and I've always liked you, but I'm warning you. If you stand in the way of this boy getting into a good home with a boy that understands him, I'll... Mary, the court can only listen to both sides and try and decide what's best for the boy's welfare. I'm not opposed to the adoption. You mean I came all the way from Portland for nothing? What did you send for me for? Will you please sit down? We still have no expression of opinion from the Welfare Board on the subject. Ms. Freeman. Your Honor, the Welfare Board felt that it was better to raise Donnie Mitchell for some inland occupation. 
So we sent him to several inland homes and farms. We were wrong. Every attempt we made to distract him from the sea resulted in some insubordination. Yes, go on. There just seemed to be something so deep-rooted, so strong and compelling about this, this calling for the sea, that it was useless to fight against it. I've tried and failed. Donnie needs love, guidance from someone he trusts. He needs it especially now after what he's been through. I'm sure if given these things, he can be raised to be a good citizen in a useful and honorable trade. The board recommends the petition be granted. Well, Your Honor, let us then... not jump to any conclusions. I am in complete sympathy with your views, but I have a very grave responsibility in a case like this. Before I can make any decision, I must know what the boy's feelings are. Come on. Come on. Nothing to be frightened of, Donnie. These are all old friends. You know Mr. Stillwell, Miss Freeman, Mrs. McKay. Now, Donnie, Mr. Stillwell wants you to come and live with him. He wants to adopt you, make you a son. Would you like that? No. Donnie. Don't you want to come and live with Joe and me? Work on the boat every day? Be my partner? No. Why? I got reasons. Uh, excuse me, Mr. George. Is it okay if I talk? Yes. Danny, you come to live with Hart and Joe, and Joe, he know by the farm. He no raise minks. He stay with you. We fish every day. Okay, Donnie? No. Donnie. Come here. Come here, I want to talk to you. Don't you like Hard anymore? Yes. And why don't you want to go and live with him and be on his boat again? Because I went to reform school, that's why. Because I stole a camera. I knew that, son. You did? Sure. And you didn't care? Of course not. But I done it when you told me never to, Hard. I know, Donnie. You made a mistake, but you paid for it. We all make mistakes sometimes. The important thing is not to make them again. Keep on. 